Hello and welcome to Convict Inc. This is your host Robert Rosso, and it's Mob Monday. Please subscribe if you have. Please subscribe, subscribe if you have not already, and please, please, please hit the like button if you like the video. Um, I realized something uh, about these videos for Mob Monday. I'm really gonna have to sit down with my sources, my friends, and do a whole bunch of them at one time because what I sat out once again to do today totally changed because this morning I was out in this yard uh, doing a bunch of stuff and, and uh, blew out my back and had some kind of heat stroke, whatever. Anyway, uh, I have to figure out something to do to have a bunch of videos uh, on the back burner. Okay, so this story is about a guy from the Patriarch family Patriarch or family, I'm sorry, out of uh, Rhode Island by the name of Jerry Womet. Jerry Womet and I served time together at Lewisburg. Well, that's where I first met him, back in uh, 2003 to 2007. Um, he lived on the different side of the prison than where I was at, uh, and I really didn't talk to him for uh, three, four years anyway. I knew who he was, we passed you know, I said hello. He played handball religiously with Joe Monte, who was a Colombo soldier. Also, um, Jojo Russo didn't play much, but but Jojo was out there often. But uh, Jerry Womet was uh, was a hell of a racquetball player for a guy in his 60s. Very respectful guy, not in any kind of a mix. Uh, he would he wouldn't shy away from making a dollar. And I'm not saying that in, in the illegal sense. I'm just saying that in general. And that's where this story is going. There's a guy by the name of the Frenchman, Christophe Rank. Brokencourt. How you say? Brokencourt. Brokencourt. Uh, there's a movie that was done about him. Um, Bad Love. That's what you say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm looking at my wife. Uh, so, uh, most a lot of people know about this guy. People have asked me about him. Uh, if I knew this guy in the past, I really didn't know him, but this guy was a, was a French con conman. Uh, he claimed to be some nobleman heir, uh, to the Rockefellers or a relative of the Rockefellers. And, uh, he conned a bunch of affluent people out of their money. And in prison, he lived very large and he ran a lot of cons in prison on the convicts or inmates, whatever, uh, he went to Jerry Wilmette, and I do not know what the deal was, but he borrowed money from Jerry under the assumption that they were going to make, you know, a small fortune back. Some days went by, weeks went by, I think it was over a month, and uh, Jerry walked up to this guy who was a lot younger than him uh, at the ice machine and blasted him. <laughs> uh just nailed him in the face. Uh, Jerry did have a guy with him, a big Italian guy, you know, kind of as the bodyguard, but he didn't need the bodyguard. The Frenchman didn't fight back. He didn't do shit. Jerry ended up in the hole. And subsequently, I went to the hole for, I believe it was my first drunk. Uh, there was a period of time at Lewisburg. I was sober for a while and I started drinking, doing drugs, and I just started going to the hole. Boom, boom, boom. Jerry was my cellmate. Now, again, I did not know Jerry very well. And this is what I did know about him. I knew that he had letters from John Gotti posted on his bulletin board. Whenever people have that, it's kind of it's kind of like I said about um, Tony uh, uh, last week. Um, Calabrese, I'm sorry. He had pictures of himself, newsplay, newspaper clippings of himself on his bulletin board. And mob, hitman, this. It's like, why? So I never knew Jerry, but I heard about these letters that he had and that all he did was talk about John Gotti a lot. And people used to say like he really didn't even know John. When I got to the hole with him, uh, he was just a real pleasure to be around. I mean, just a really, really nice guy. The only gripe I would say about Jerry is he had a case. I don't remember the particulars, but he, he could have got out. He had some action in his case. And... I picked up on it because he had his transcripts and stuff. And 
you know, he, he was kind of hard headed in the sense that I, I was a jailhouse lawyer and, and really not a reputable one at that time. But uh, I always did hate it because I thought that I could have got him some action in court and he wasn't going to go through me. He was going to go through regular mob attorney, whatever. But we became friends even after we got out of the hole. They were going to let the Frenchman back out on the compound. And uh, somebody in Jerry's circle, I, I just put it that way, came to me uh, with the contract to have the Frenchman knocked off, taken off. And uh, sure enough, while he was in the hole, um, one of my guys took care of it. And uh, the Frenchman got stomped. Jerry lived happily ever after in Lewisburg. Uh, I ran into Jerry again in 2012 at Butner FCI 2. He sat at the Italian table. Uh, he was Portuguese. Uh, I believe it was Portuguese. Um, but most people thought he was Italian. And uh, most people called him Wametti too. Like, you know, do that Italian thing on him. Uh, pleasure to be around again. We got along great. Everything was good. Uh, then I had that blow up with Joey Testa. Jerry and Joey Testa were, were uh, very close. Uh, Jerry was in Joey Testa's workout car. So these guys would all go out. They worked out every day. You got to give it to them. I, despite their age, these guys worked out. And uh, Jerry was really cool with me. We were close until me and Joey got into it and I stopped sitting at the Italian table. But even then, I remember right before I got uh, shipped out of there in passing, he just said, uh, you know, he just said he missed talking to me because we used to have like a lot of talks about current events and so forth. And he did say that he wished he would have uh, uh, let me help him on his case. Um, also, it's important to note that Jerry Womet was close with John and they did have a close relationship. He just... Uh, uh, idolized John for being a stand-up guy. You know, that's that was his his uh, two cents about it. So that's pretty much it on this Mob Monday. Very short story, I know. Uh, this just is uh, something I wanted to, to bring up because you have, on one hand, this Frenchman who there was a movie made about and then the connection with mob guys and the Dirty White Boys and me involved and it's like something uh, one of my friends old Sally's actually suggested I do. Um, now, again, the reason, because I slept four or five hours today, uh, because I was working earlier. And let me go ahead and do this, because I know some of you guys like the personal stuff. <laughs> Martin is shaking her head. Don't show me, don't show me. So, uh, I'm remodeling everything. See that pile of bricks right there? Took them off of that trailer over there, half of them. And over there... There's still bricks. Oh, see the fire pit? We're going to burn right now. So I made this little fire pit today. Lifted all those rocks by myself. I don't have a tractor anymore. Family member issues. And see the little walkway I did? The, that all came from a house that I own across town that I tore apart. With all that wood right there. 1910. Actually, some of it's 1899, that wood. Some of it's the 40s or 50s or whatever. And uh, this is where I was pulling brick from too. And I cannot lift this. The bucket of the tractor barely lift that. And that's what I blew my back trying to pick up earlier. And uh, I gotta get all this cleaned up because there's gonna be an add-on to this tool room, two stories. I don't know, we gotta get the house finished first. There's my wife not wanting to be seen today. And there it is there. See the yard's all messed up. People have been asking me about it. Uh, love it, love it, love it. That's my nearest neighbor. And then you can see that's a motorhome that actually runs that I bought for a thousand dollars. It's awesome. And I really want to travel to the United States in it. And there's more wood that I have to clean up. And there's where there's wild pigs that can actually eat you. Some kind of mountain lion and coyotes that come in my yard. Okay, anyway, it's a little bit of personal life. I know, I'll, hear, I'll, hear, I'll get messages about that later. We don't wanna hear your personal life. Take care, sorry the Mob Monday was short. 
uh, two days from now, we'll get with my other friends and we're going to sit down. I'm going to shoot videos so I'll have them in store so I don't run into this late problem. Bye. Say bye, Marta. <laughs> hey, thanks for your support, everybody. I appreciate it.